for a new experience, this is by far the most fucking fun I've had. No game I've played has made me have this much fun. Well, what a difference about 14 months makes for a video game, man. What a shame. What a shame. Before I start this commentary, I want to let everybody know, and I will reiterate if you've seen my content before, I'm not a Halo fanboy. I haven't played every single Halo game. I've mentioned before that I've played like a Halo emulator on PC in high school, and that's about it. That's my entire experience with Halo before Infinite. I'm not as big of a fan of Halo as, say, other content creators that I watch. People like... Eckhart's Ladder, who is mostly Star Wars, but also covers Halo on occasion. And probably one of the bigger Halo fanboys that I follow, the Act Man. And believe me when I tell you, I've watched a lot of Act Man content on Halo Infinite in these last couple of days, trying to prepare myself for making this commentary and trying to be as educated on the subject as I can so that I don't come off A, amateurish, and B, misinformed on certain situations. So let's kind of start off with my experience here. As a matter of fact, today is the 25th of February that I'm making this commentary. When the video will come out, probably will be another day or two. But I'm making the commentary on the 25th. Just last night, up until about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning going into this morning, I was playing Halo Infinite because I wanted to see if I could still have fun playing this game. If you checked out my Twitch channel over the summer, you'll know that I had a pretty good time, a couple of rage moments here and there, but I had a genuine good time playing Halo and streaming it. It's actually a pretty fun, easy game to stream. Unfortunately, nobody watches it. I still have fun playing the game. I, I, I found myself having a good time. My issue was never really with the mechanics of the game and the sandbox surrounding the game. But I do think that there were some inconsistencies with certain weapons that I think could be fixed. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like those patches are coming anytime soon and we'll get into that. But all in all, as a player, my experience was positive. So what exactly is the problem with Halo Infinite right now? If the gameplay is more or less solid... Probably some of the smoothest gameplay I've had and I've played in quite a long time. Why is nobody playing this fucking game? Now, let me preface by saying this. If you followed me on the channel, you'll know that I pretty much only exclusively play Big Team Battle. And that's only because I don't have anybody to play this game with. So playing the 4v4 modes, the typical smaller modes that you would play Halo... I don't want to suck. <laughs> so I play in a game mode where my bad performances don't necessarily weigh too much on the team, depending on what the actual mode is. In big team battle, I'm more or less invisible. And for the most part, I hold up pretty well. I'm more of like a middle of the pack, upper echelon type of player, pretty consistently. And I, of course, have the couple of streaks of, you know, two or three games I don't do so good. But after those two or three games... It's back to kicking ass again. So my view of Halo only exclusively comes from that one singular mode. The problem is, even the smaller modes, in addition to the bigger modes, don't really have content. There's been no new weapons that have been released. And worst of all, there's been no new maps, to my knowledge. There might have been a map in the smaller modes, but I don't play the smaller modes. So to me, that map is worthless. I would like to see a new big team battle map every now and again. We haven't had a big team battle map since last year. And it sucks because I like the bigger maps. I like the feeling of moving around. I like the feeling of using vehicles to kick ass. I like the grand warfare sandbox, anything can happen, crazy shit in a match. I love that. I thrive on that. That's why I play games like Battlefield. But man, we just haven't gotten that. We just have not gotten that. And it's a real goddamn shame. And part of that is because of everything happening at 343. I watched a lot of Ackman videos, as I said, leading up to this commentary, 
trying to understand the situation that was happening with the game as best as I could through people that I regularly watch. And holy crap, dude. I don't know if you guys remember, I used to work at Amazon. And when you work at Amazon, they have a pretty high turnover rate. If anyone's worked there, you'll know. I think most people don't work there for more than maybe a year or so at a time. So that's a pretty high revolving door of employees that are coming in. What's troubling as I'm watching this video with Ackman, he's explaining that all of these executives, all of these big people in 343 keep leaving. And I'm not sure about you guys. I'm not in the gaming industry. I'm not a gaming developer. I don't really care to read most of the ins and outs of what's going on in studios. But when I hear a big company that has probably one of the biggest gaming IPs is having a revolving door of higher ups and people in charge and managers on a consistent fucking basis. That's kind of scary, man. For the people on the lower totem poles that do a lot of the, I don't want to say grunt work, but do a lot of the work on the games, it's like the leadership is always constantly changing. So like, what's the point? You know, maybe some people's leadership skills are better than others and other people are just sick of being in the position they're in when it comes to the game and they're frustrated with, you know, the big bosses like Microsoft. And I think Microsoft has just as much of a reason to be at fault here as 343 is for the current state of Halo Infinite, in my honest opinion, based on everything I've read and watched. It's a real shame, man, how the morale of one pretty big developer with, again, probably one of the biggest gaming IPs of all time in their hands, it's suffering because of it. You know, it's suffering because of all these issues that they're having behind the scenes that we don't necessarily get to see unless we hear that, oh, so-and-so is leaving, this person's now going to take their place. And then how how long is it going to be until they leave? And someone else has to take the place. Now, I know the gaming industry is a pretty rough place. You know, people get replaced in there all the time, but it's still pretty sad. You know, it's still pretty rough, I'm sure, on the people that are working, that when they're always having issues with leadership, not saying that people are bad leaders, but people are always leaving, there really is no leadership at that point. Because then who, who's going to be the fucking person in charge? Who's going to be the person pushing that direction to make the game better? Like I said... Microsoft is as much of a reason to be at fault here as anybody because Microsoft, as far as I've seen, has had a major play in the woes that 343 has been having. So I can't really put the blame on them all that much, but at the same time, there are some things about 343 that I don't necessarily care for. And that kind of comes with the whole broken promises that they've been telling people, hey, we're going to bring this in and we're going to bring this mode in. We're going to bring this feature in. And then it's not in the game at launch. And some of the stuff still isn't in the game. For instance, again, I don't really use these features, so it's not really a big deal for me. But I know for the greater community, it's a big deal. Things like Forge, things like community games, split screen, all of those big features have been in Halo from my understanding since the beginning of time. As a matter of fact, allow me to tell you another personal experience I had with Halo. Now, I might have been wrong in my first time talking about this game, but that was actually not the first time I had played Halo when I was in high school. The first time I had remembered playing Halo, and I don't know why I forgot this after all these years, I was at my neighbor's house, and they had an Xbox, an OG Xbox, mind you. And I think they had, like, Halo Combat Evolved or Halo 2, one of those early Halo games, or even Halo 3, who knows. And we were all playing split screen and we were all talking shit and we were all having a good time. I was like middle school age at this point. I was like maybe fourth or fifth grade at the time. I remember feeling good, like playing with these guys who were all older than me and my friend across the street. He was a good guy. He was my neighbor. We were like bonding, I guess, since we ran in different friend groups. And that was cool. For me, I look back on that memory and I can't help but feel, and Ackman said this perfectly in his videos as well, how split screen brought people in the community together. And I thought that was just so beautiful to listen to, and that's what jogged my memory. 
And I'm not going to lie, I'm getting a little emotional about it for some reason. But at the same time, it's it's a real shame that they just couldn't include it at launch. And at this point, it may never be in the game at all. I mean, if it isn't in the game already, a year into its post-release, or 14 months or so, whatever it is now, it's still pretty sad, man. It's pretty fucking pathetic, I'm, I'm not going to lie. The fact that they even said it was going to be in the game at launch, and then they kept pushing it back and pushing it back. That's terrible. That's that's rough. Forge, too. I, I've seen a few videos on Forge, and Forge is a pretty instrumental tool when it comes to creating maps in the game. And a lot of those maps that have been in the regular rotations in Halo games have actually been created through forging tools. And I think that's pretty fucking cool. But it's not in the game as far as I know. I don't know what the tools are to use it, and I'm not creative enough to actually go about using it, but I know people in the community are, and they don't have that outlet, and that bothers me to an extent, you know? And I think the most egregious part, for me anyway, and this is my humble opinion, so don't sue me, the most egregious part is this lack of social interaction with other players in the game. It's a real goddamn shame that there's no lobbies anymore in games. Call of Duty doesn't do this anymore. Battlefield never really had it to begin with. But Call of Duty used to have lobbies and people would talk shit or even make friends in the games on their teams. And they did away with that in Modern Warfare with the constant revolving of lobbies after every game. I didn't like that feature, man. I'm not the one to typically use game chat, but... Sometimes I'll use it when I just feel lonely, man. When none of my boys are on and I'm just like, all right, let's talk to some people and hopefully they're not a squeaker. For Halo, I was actually, when I was playing last night, I was actually trying to talk to people. And I actually did talk to a few people. And they were really cool, it seemed. This is just a face value thing, but they seemed like they were cool. And some of these guys are like, yo, you should add me, you should add me. Well, I'm playing on PC, so I'm not really sure how that would work, but... And they're on Xbox, some of them. So I tried adding them, and one, it didn't really work, because I guess two different things. I guess I have to do something with the Xbox app on my PC for it to work properly. Who knows? And then on top of that, we don't even have a lobby to, like, keep talking in. You know, for all we know, I could be building some friendships and actually playing with people that could become friends. Like I said, I have no friends playing the game. Well, God damn it! last night I was trying to make friends for the first time in quite a long time through game chat. It sucked. I hated it. It was terrible. Ugh. It, I, it, it's sad, bro. Like I, I can't help but shake this feeling that it's like, how could the gaming industry in general just start taking away these features that don't need to be taken away? Gaming is a social thing. There are games where you can be solo and play on your own, and those games are great. Like, I love playing Red Dead 2 solo or with a couple of buddies every now and again. I love playing Ghost of Tsushima because the fucking story mode's beautiful. I love playing solo games like GTA through that before online becomes a whole mess of fucking people nuking each other consistently. That's peaceful to me. But when I'm playing a multiplayer game... I want to be social. And when the game prevents me from being social and making friends, it makes me sad. I don't know about you guys and what your opinion on that is, but that's mine. So I guess to kind of just wrap it all up, I don't really know what the state of Halo is going to be like moving forward. I have no intention to not play the game. I think it's a decent game, but the content and the lack of features for me kind of doesn't keep me playing it all that long. Like, I just played the game last night, and the last time I played Halo before that was, like, July. It's like a game I come back to every couple of months because there's nothing to keep me from coming back, but when I want to have a good casual time, I'll come back, you know? Last thing I want to mention, too. I didn't get the chance to mention this when I was talking about the gameplay. So one of my biggest gripes was the progression system in the game and how basically all the progression went to the battle pass and the battle pass really lacks good content. And if there is good content, it's behind a paywall, which 
the paywall and the uh, battle pass and all that is as egregious as it is because they're expecting you to pay for a bunch of cosmetics and other stuff in the game when the game itself really doesn't keep you playing all that long to begin with. So I think that's kind of a stupid, but that's my opinion. But they did kind of fix it with, you know, match performance being added to challenge progression and that also moves up the battle pass. And if you would include things like the boost that you get, they actually come in handy. You know, you can probably blow through this current battle pass that they have in like a couple of days if you have enough boosts and you play well in the games and you do all the challenges. Like just last night, I leveled up like 12 and a half times. That's how quick it was over a course of a couple hours. And it's like a 30 tier battle pass. So I'm glad that they kind of introduced the progression a little bit better in the battle pass, but I think they probably could have did it a little bit better because I want my points that I get in the game to actually count towards the battle pass, not just give me 250 points for being in the match or match performance or any of that shit. Like, come on. I got like 1,500 points in a game of stockpile or something along those lines. I kind of want that 1,500 in there, you know? Like, I thought that was the point of progression. You the more points you get, it goes to the progression of what you're doing and leveling up something or a battle pass or things of that nature. I don't know. Maybe I was misinformed. Who knows? But that's just my way of thinking about how progression could be implemented a little bit better. Well, I think I've talked long enough. I'm sorry that this is kind of a longer video, but I had a lot to talk about and I wanted to be as informative and as open and as real about this as possible. And I appreciate the fact that you guys are still here. If you're still watching the video, please subscribe to the channel. Hit notifications so that you're updated on when I have future videos coming out, which hopefully gets a little bit more consistent in the coming weeks and months. And of course, you can always follow me down in the links in the description. I've got podcasts that you can listen to. I've got social media that I'm trying to be a little bit better on. I know the Ed0626 Twitter is a little bit dead sometimes, so if you don't mind... Follow me there, interact with me there, greatly would appreciate it. Thanks for coming by, y'all. Take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. God bless. Bye-bye.